I'm on my cycle. And before you scroll, I have important information to give to you today, whether you are male or female, whether you are still of the age of cycling or not. And I think that it is such an honor, such a sacred right and privilege that you get to watch your friendly neighborhood teacher go through inconsistent moods and cycles of destruction in real time. My media manager wants me to, she, she tells me all the time the, the PC police, the politi politically correct police are gonna come get me if I'm not careful. So this message is actually for everyone, not just for women, not just for cis women, not just for um, women of a certain age either. This is for men, this is for cis men, this is for old people, children, this is for every, maybe not super young children, but for everybody because this is important and it can apply to every single person's life. A friend of mine sent me a meme just yesterday and the top of it said how I try to be, how I'm trying to be, and it was like somebody in a meditation pose and then it's in the next picture it said how I actually am and it cut to some video feed of, of an actress I think her name's Tina McCarthy where she's punching people in the throat and buildings are blowing up behind her as she's walking away and that's absolutely correct because we go through cycles and seasons and when I am on my cycle I have heightened hormones and what that does in the brain is it allows me to feel a certain low frequency because it's pulling all of my energy into the lower parts of my chakras, into the root and into the sacral, where we are really focused on safety and stability and emotion. And so if all my energy is being pulled into this space, then this is where my focus is, this is where I'm feeling, this is the vibe that I'm at, and this gives me the opportunity to tear down everything that I've been building. Why would you wanna do that? Because the things that you're building become crystallized in time if you don't allow them to cycle. I actually know somebody, I'm gonna pull her book because I think it's important. She was a client of mine and went on to complete her own shamanic training. Her name is Whitney, uh, Whitney Stout, and she wrote the book, She's No Longer Silent, or she co-wrote the book with a bunch of other women. And it's beautiful, it's completely women written. Each chapter is by a different woman and it's just kind of going through their struggles and things like that. And she went, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this story, but she went through a cycle where she literally took all of her books into her backyard, put them in a pile and set them on fire. Set them on fire. And my Capricorn moon is going, do you know how much money that was? Do you know how much money you just set on fire? But she was so tired of being stuck because what she had done was she had written her story. And now her story in black and white print is crystallized in time forever, never changing. Even though the story itself had a positive outcome, the story could never be changed because it is in a book that will last forever. So she just went out there and burned all of her books. And I think that that is amazing. That's what we should do with every single thing that we have. Maybe not like all of our things, like our clothes and furniture or whatnot, but we do need to continue to allow things to cycle in our lives. We build really, really big things sometimes. Sometimes these things take, these things take us like 10 years to build. But then we get to a point where these things become the very things that are keeping us from moving over into the next things that need to do. Now this is what in the shamanic practices we call a back door. So that means that anything that you build, anything at all, even if it's spiritual, even if it's beautiful, there comes a time when it has reached its full potential with you and you're being called to move on to other things. 
And as long as you continue to hold on to that one thing, you are stunting its growth, you are preventing your growth, you are blocking yourself from, your, from furthering your path and purpose, and everyone suffers. Now, I see a lot of students, especially their first year around the medicine wheel, who take back doors and think that it means that they have to do spiritual work. And this is a little besides the point, but I do wanna make sure I put this out there. Because when we teach back doors, we're teaching that it means when you first step into your spiritual path, not to give yourself a fallback plan, not to give yourself a safety net. Because when you first step into your spiritual path, you have a lot of fear. You fear your intuition, you fear what you're capable of, you fear your power. And so if you allow yourself to say, you know what, I know that this is my calling, but I'm gonna keep this thing back here going so that I have something to fall back on if this fails. What you're doing is you're splitting your energy between two separate spaces, meaning that neither one of those spaces is getting your full focus or 100% of your power and intention, which means that neither space will actually be fully successful to its full potential. So we shut the back doors, we don't give ourselves a safety net, and we just put all of our full focus and all of our full intention into the one thing that we're doing. Even my mother-in-law, I love her, bless her, if you're watching this, you're the best in the entire world and one of the best teachers I have ever had. But one thing that she really likes to do as a support person when we're going in to do really big, really scary things, she likes to say things like, well, if you don't like it, you can always just stop doing it. Or if it doesn't work out, you can always just sell it. You can always just do this thing again. And that's really helpful to take anxiety and pressure off, but it always felt to me like a back door. Like, yes, I can start teaching. Yes, I can start doing sessions. Yes, I can start running a business, but I know that if it gets too scary or too big, I can always fall back on my old plan, on my old job, on her. And this is a form of enabling, which is a back door. So shutting all that, I have to be able to stand in my fear, in the thing I fear the most and push myself forward with my full focus, my full energy in order to accomplish what I'm being called to do. Now, the reason I brought up the students is because on the first go round the medicine wheel, I noticed that a lot of them, because they're being called to do healing sessions at that time, because they're being called to um, really step into their power, they think that this means they have to quit their nine to five job. They have to put all of their focus and intention into their spirituality. And that might be true for them for a certain season, especially if their job is causing them pain, if it's not where they're meant to be. But that's actually not what this is. What this actually means is exactly what I said. If you are being called to do one thing, you just really need to focus on that one thing. It doesn't mean that you have to tear down your support system, your stability, your nine to fives. It doesn't mean you have to quit all of those things, but you do have to know what your calling is, where you're being cycled into, what this cycling is. So when this cis woman has this surge of hormones during her cycle, all of her energy goes into those root and sacral spaces. That means that she doesn't have the heart energy to continue pouring out to others and giving. This is her cycling back into the earth. Rather than her blooming out, providing food and nurturing and everything else that nature does in the spring summer spaces she's coming back to her autumn winter spaces where she needs to be still quiet cared for taken care of and seen this is her place her time the cycle here is for her to be given into and poured into men i hope you're listening um, mask partners, I hope you're listening because this is when she gets poured into, okay? Her. Now, the biggest problem that I think 
in relations or interrelationships is when the woman is on her cycle or her PMS state, her premenstrual cycle, and something happens and she blows up. Like things seem really big because when there's a PMS cycle or a menstrual cycle happening, this is where she tells, those hormones tell her minds all kinds of things. It tells her that nothing's right, that she's ugly, that she's fat, that she's this, that she's that, that everyone hates her, that everything's wrong, and that's just because she's meant to be poured into. But if you do, as the partner of the cycling person, if you do something that upsets her, it's gonna be a big deal. It's gonna be a big deal. And it's not your job to say, oh, well, that's not real because you're on your period. It's absolutely real to her, absolutely real. Your job is to understand that whatever you happen to do, as little as it may be or seem to you, to her, it feels like a betrayal, it feels like a lack of safety, and it feels like an insecure space. Because the remember we talked in the last video about the masculine and the feminine in us all and the roles of our inner masculine and the roles of our inner feminine. So in interpersonal relationships where there is a masculine and a feminine partner, whether male or female, a masculine and a feminine partner, when one partner is cycling, if the other partner does or says anything to piss this person off, Essentially, it's gonna be a thousand times bigger because this person is saying, wow, you betrayed me, I'm not safe with you, you're not protecting me, so that means that I have to now be in my masculine energy so I can protect myself. And to the partner, this may seem like things being blown out of proportion, it may seem like she's really just acting out, it may seem like a lot, your job is to stay calm, because you've already screwed up at this point. Your job is to stay calm and to start giving. Give to her, protect her, keep her safe emotionally, whatever that means to her, not to you, whatever it means to her to be safe emotionally, give that to her, because that's what's happening when we get pissed off at the world because we live in a society where we're told to give when we need to receive when we have nothing left to give we have to keep giving when we are naturally trying to cycle back down into our autumn winter spaces the world is expecting us at full strength full power full speed and we have to force that out of ourselves meaning that we have to step into our masculine energy to be able to accomplish the things that are demanded of us in society or just in the world in general we have to do that i feel like i heard a story one time of how like back in the day um, when a woman would go through her cycle, she got to go out in the woods for a week and just be by herself. <laughs> and I really like that idea. I think that that's a wonderful thing to be able to do. And um, I think that everyone should super support that. But like also keep paying us because we need to be able to live and to survive. And this is just naturally the way things go. So we should really do that. But personal relationships this is where you get to pour into her where you get to love her keep her safe and if she's upset like I said it's because she feels like you did not keep her emotionally safe in that particular moment when she needed it the most which really feels like a betrayal now cis women when you're going through this cycle that also means that when this happens when you feel yourself getting super pissed off or upset about something um, with your partner or something like that, being aware of your cycles will also be really helpful for you so you know what you're supposed to be tearing down or ending and what is just going to be a cycle that in a couple of weeks you're going to feel completely different about, okay? Because during this premenstrual week and menstrual week, what he's done or what this partner has done that's made you angry might be something good for you guys to talk about because when you do this I feel 
uncared for, unsafe, unprotected emotionally. And I really want to be able to be in my natural feminine cycle right now with you. I want to be able to trust that you're going to place these boundaries for me, that you're going to stand up for me, that you're going to take care of me, and that I'm not going to have to do that myself all the time. Otherwise, there's no point in me being in this partnership. I want a partner who knows what I need when I need it, and communication needs to happen in order for them to know because they, people who aren't you are not going to just naturally know. Even psychics are not going to just naturally know everything that you need all of the time. And communication is super, super important with all of this. So if something like that happens, we're more looking for, in interpersonal relationships, we're more looking for a conversation that needs to happen. Uh, things that need to change between your partnerships in order to make them more healthy so that they can continue growing and continue being expansive. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So everyone being willing to have the conversations and to do the work towards it is super important. Now bringing this into spiritual or energetic terms, we cycle for a very specific reason. Women are known, cis women are known to be more mature than cis men. And the reason why is because we go through cycles every single month. And it does something. It does something energetically. Women, this is your power. There is power in blood. If you do not like blood, especially if you're a masculine energy or a cis man, let's get a little bit uh, deeper with that. Let's get some respect going for this because there is power, energetic power, power in the DNA, anything that has to do with your saliva, with your blood, hair, parts of the body, they hold all of your power, blood especially. So this is a natural connection to the earth and natural connection to your inherent wild woman power. And it's beautiful. It's to be honored and respected. Whether you cycle or not, whether you're male or female or not, this is a cycle to be respected. Blood is so, so, so powerful. So women who are disconnected from their cycles and from their own bloods, they tend to lose their confident power, their magic, knowing who they are on their inside, their inner drum beat seems to be dulled when they are disconnected from their own blood. Now, I'm not saying we need to throw blood on everything and dance around naked. Maybe I am saying that, but like for the sake of this video, I'm not saying that. But that does mean getting to know your feminine self, your feminine body, the femininity inside, um, not thinking that it's gross or nasty and really just getting to sit with the power of what's there, the sacredness, the honor of having this cycle, what it's actually doing inside of your body for the continuity of the planet and what it's doing inside of your emotional space, allowing you to build and tear down and then grow and find all the little weak spaces that make you feel unsafe or unstable and targeting those and bringing health and healing to those spaces. Men, spiritually, cis men or um, any man, any person, even a female who does not cycle, this is still an important process for you because you cycle energetically, just not physically in the tangible 3D realm, okay? This is where you go through cycles and it might not be every month, it might just be every couple of months, but you go through up and down cycles as well. So you go through cycles of time where you are extremely productive, where you feel very positive about life, where you're really putting things out there, and then you might hit a period of time where you feel kind of low energy, kind of tired, you don't have a lot of creative space, and sometimes we may even slip into the void. Let's talk about the void. The void is that deep, dark, low vibrating space where we feel like everything is done. 
everything is doomed, everything is done, there's nothing here, there's nothing left, there's nothing to look forward to, there's nothing of any worth in your past, there is just nothing surrounding you but this deep, still darkness. I love the void. Baby doll, what is happening is not that you are suicidal, it's that you are in the void. And this means that you are in the space where you get to plant the seeds of every single thing that you wanna create in your life, even if you don't know what those things are. The void. This is the space of quantum levels that we sometimes emotionally go through. This is the ego death space. So a lot of people, um, when they get to this natural space, they feel like they might, on the surface, if they're not aware of what's happening, which is why we really need to be aware of our cycles and what's happening, a lot of the time when people get here, they start to think that there's no worth, they feel a lot of worthlessness, they don't have anything to look forward into the future. I've seen, I've seen quite a few people who don't understand what space that they're in begin to think that this means that they should just unalive themselves and just put an end to everything, and they're pretty resolute in that decision. But what is happening, what is actually happening here is that you've been pushed past the cellular and molecular spaces, all of the macro spaces into the quantum spaces of nothingness. And if you just allow yourself to be there for a week or two, just for an incubation period, just allow yourself to be there for a cycle without losing hope, just letting yourself be exactly how you are in that moment, you are gonna come out of that completely different. A rebirth is going to happen. We've talked before about how we have reincarnations within this incarnation, and the void is how that happens to us spiritually. We have to die. We go through ego deaths, and then we get to spring back up and have a rebirth and live again. This is so important for people to be able to recognize the ego death, it literally feels like a death. It is not fun. It is not positive. It is not exciting. It literally, to your body, to your mind, to your ego, to your emotions, it feels like death. It feels like you're dying. It feels horrible. It's horrible. But let yourself just be there for a little while because you're going to be reborn. You're going to cycle through again. And when you come out the other side, you're going to be in a completely different space than you were before, creating completely new things with a completely leveled up energy field. You are gonna be a completely different person. And that is good, that's the point. This is a ego death, a spiritual baptism. The difference between that, the void, and actually feeling, um, I don't want to say this too many times, but actually feeling like you want to unalive yourself because we do want to be aware of our cycles and what's actually happening for us. In the void space, one of the things that I feel like sets it apart from other spaces is that when you are that deep and that dark, there's a certain stillness that's there. Even though there's a lot of fear, because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to be in that space. Even though there's a lot of sadness, depression, and fear in that space, there's something there that I said that seems so resolute that it's just whatever. Let it all go. Throw it all away. Let's be done with it all. Let it die. This void space, I've seen personally and heard from multiple sources who I know have been through the void space, this seems to be a commonality. The difference between that and knowing whether or not you have an attachment that's causing depression and suicidal thoughts is that lack of resolution and stillness. Because even though both spaces might have fear 
and things like that. When you have an attachment, it feels more like an anxiety type of fear and you tend to get a lot of thoughts, a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of paranoid type of thoughts because you're being fed information. Remember, everything here starts with belief systems, thoughts, then emotion, um, and then action. So if you have an entity attachment on you, it's probably feeding you thoughts that you may not be aware of that is causing a negative emotion and then having a negative reaction in your body, such as anxiety, fear, depression, um, wanting to leave everyone behind and cut everyone off, uh, isolate yourself, things like that. So another thing I've, I've kind of, along those same lines that I've noticed with the void space, is a lot of the time they're not cutting everybody off. Because a lot of the time when you're in the void, even though you want your stillness, your silence, your aloneness, there's just something underneath the surface that you may not recognize that just feels like a cycle. You may not recognize that it feels like a cycle, but what I've noticed with these people who are going through the void is that they wanna talk. They wanna talk about this. They wanna talk about how dark they are. They wanna talk about how low they are. And because they don't realize that it's part of a cycle, the story that they're trying to say becomes cyclic in their mind. So they start saying the same stories over and over again. Well, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Um, and, and they just don't know how to get out of that story because it's cyclic. And they can't get out of that story until they surrender to that story, until they surrender to the void space and allow themselves to die and be reborn spiritually, metaphorically, to be reborn. If you have an attachment, it's just a different feeling. And most of the time you'll know if you have an attachment. It just feels like there's something creepy there. It feels creepy. You might hear all of those repeating thoughts in your mind. And these thoughts aren't... It's not that stillness of darkness. These are thoughts like, I'm not good enough. I can't trust these people. Nobody likes me. Um, there are even attachments that happen and dark forces that come in that like to mimic spiritual people. So they disguise themselves as certain leaders, um, spiritual leaders and things like that. And then they start to tell you things that are good at first because they want you to trust that there's some sort of guide or teacher's consciousness coming to you. And so you begin to trust this teacher's consciousness that's coming to you and listening to it. And then those dark attachments start slowly start infusing dark thoughts into you, such as, well, you shouldn't do that. You need to be by yourself. Don't hang out with this person. You're doing all of this wrong. A lot of criticism, a lot of judgment, a lot of shame. That's an attachment. One, spiritual leaders most of the time are not going to astral project themselves to you to be your personal guide. We've got our own crap going on, okay? Just throwing that out there first of all. So if you ever see me like coming to your consciousness, that's probably not real unless I've told you, yeah, I'll send you some energy or something like that. Not real, not me. So that is an attachment. And how we rid ourselves of attachments essentially is... I'm going to be completely honest. It's not through crystals. It's not through bringing in the light. It's not through doing all of the things that we have heard to do to combat the darkness. Those things help. They're a band-aid. They are a temporary reprieve. But the only way to really relieve yourself of an attachment is to change your inner frequency, to raise your vibration. And you do this through healing work, gratefulness, exercises, love energy, things like that. And since healing work takes a little bit of time, the attachments a lot of the time can be released in one session. I would say 92% of the time, an attachment can be released in one healing session because we can find the contract that's holding you in that low vibration. We can find the weakened space because 
Attachments, like we learned about when we talked about the evil eye, attachments can only actually get into our energy field if we have a low vibrating space due to a past wounding that has not healed. So we can target that space, we can raise the vibratory level there, we can strengthen our energy field through that, and that's what keeps out attachments. No matter what negative energy or dark energy comes to us, it cannot attach if we do not have low vibrating or weakened spaces. Now, healers, psychics, teachers, those who are out there, you do sometimes get attachments just by being out there to the world and all of these things are seeing you. Okay, so this is almost like the bug being drawn to the light thing, but we know that our life is bright, if our light is bright enough, if we are high vibrating enough, that attachments can't get in. But sometimes they do. Boop. Okay, I know I'm being very contradictory. I'm on a period. I'm allowed to do what I want. Say something. So this happens for a reason. This happens because it's part of our natural cycle and growth. If we were constantly building, 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 teaching, 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 healing, 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 healing others, we would never cycle. We are just building. But our divine masculine self allows in little things from time to time, little attachments, little bad things, little setbacks, because then instead of going straight all the time, we come back, we circle back around, we cycle back to this thing and we're like, whoa, what is this? And then we get the chance to make ourselves better by continuing our own healing process, our own growth, our own strengthening. So everything has a cycle, a season, a purpose, even if it seems negative. It's just part of our cycle. So I felt like I was going to say something with that, and I don't remember now. Okay, I'll come back to it. Let's talk about tests. If you are bringing yourself back around, remember that means that your own divine masculine energy allowed in this entity right here, allowed this thing to happen, that means that you are testing yourself. You need to grow, you need to cycle, and you also have self-doubt. When we go through what we would consider a test in life, I hate the word test, I hate the word lesson, because it implies a lack of wisdom, it implies punishment, and it also implies an outside force on our life, none of which is true. So what's happening when we go through tests is that part of our subconscious mind or even our own solar plexus space doubts our capability and ability to do the things that we're being called to do and we kind of are testing the waters. We want to know, are we going to sabotage or are we gonna hold strong? Are we weak in this area or can we push through? So when tests, not just cycles because of things that we haven't healed, but when tests start coming to us, the same kinds of things over and over and over again, it's because your subconscious mind is wondering, am I able to do this? Am I powerful enough to do this? And there's a million examples of this all around us, but um, one we can just throw out there would be if someone kept coming to us, if someone comes to us and they start to test us, they start to judge us or do something like that and it really triggers us. When we're on our spiritual path, we need to know this is a trigger for me, which means that I need to look at myself and realize why this bothers me. So you do that, you might have a bit of healing done, some inner child work, some ancestral healing. Whew, okay, glad I can let that go now. And then here comes another person testing that same thing, really poking your buttons. And what this is, is you testing yourself. You wanna know in this moment, can I be 
calm? Can I be loving? Can I see my worth? Can I see my confidence? Can I stand true in what I believe? Do I actually believe what I believe to be true? Am I strong and wise and of value? And until you know that you are and you begin to stand true in that in those moments, then those tests are going to keep coming because your subconscious is telling them to. I looked back on when we're talking about attachments and all of those different things. I remembered what I was going to say earlier. I, I rewatched uh, one of my old videos. A lot of the time when I record these, I don't watch my videos. I just record whatever I'm channeling through and I put them up. But I did rewatch the video of me channeling the Archangel Jophiel and Michael because I don't really remember when I channel in that particular way everything that's said. So I rewatched that to see what messages had come through. And one thing that kind of bothered me at that time was how I think it was Archangel Michael gave a message of a coming up the coming of a man who everyone would see as dark and evil and bad on the outside but on the inside there was a light because he was meant to bring change or to unify the earth that bothered me upon rewatch because we are in a very political season right now and i don't speak a lot on politics because i'm all inclusive what I do and who I am as a healer and a teacher is allowing anyone with any belief to come in and receive what they feel like they need and want and desire from this space of spirituality and love. So I feel like if I speak a lot on politics, certain people might feel isolated from my teachings or from my healing, and that's not what this space is for. But have no doubt, I am of extreme opinion I know what's loving and I know what's kind and I know what's not. I know what's real and I know what's fake and I can perceive that in leaders, political leaders and other people and other teachers. So I had an instant fear moment when I went back and rewatched that video and what I realized is that it doesn't ultimately matter what the angel was saying is that in the grand scheme of things just like with these cycles just like with these tests just like with attachments in the grand scheme of things when you can see all sides that means that even the dark things even the bad things even the attachment things even the things that seem evil are helping us physically emotionally, spiritually, and collectively cycle back to certain areas that are still weak, that need to be strengthened, that need healing, that need growth, so that we can move forward again in a beautiful way. So that means that regardless of the exact meaning of that message or how it comes about, that this person might have to be a big enough personality that it collectively causes us to go back to an old wounding so that we can collectively heal it and cycle. Ugh! I love being able to see all sides, but just knowing that there is no good, there is no bad, there is high vibrating, low vibrating, but that's neutral type of energy we can learn from all things and still grow forward in love because of all of those experiences. And as we cycle through physically as cis women who have cycles, as we cycle through as the masculine energy or the cis man in relation with the person having the cycles, honoring that, making sure that there's a give and there's a take that we honor, that we protect. As we cycle through spiritually, because men, you're going to have your cycles. Those people who don't have a cycle anymore, you're still having cycles. 
You're still having your ups. You're still having your downs. And if you just hang in there, just hang in there for a couple of weeks, you're going to feel completely different because you're just cycling. You're being given a moment for growth. You're being given a moment for rest. You're being given a moment to reevaluate where you are in your life, what you want to create, and you're being given a moment to be poured into, to be held, to be quiet, to not have to do and do and give and give. It's just a cycle. And also the earth itself cycles. The earth itself has spring and summer and it has autumn and winter and the earth itself has its cycles where it's growing and giving and then where it dies back and there's nothing for it to give. We can learn from all of these things. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about today, because you might, just drop a comment, let me know. Let me know what you wanna hear more about. There might be certain topics that you really want to discuss and nothing is taboo here. As you can see, I'll talk about anything that I feel inspired naturally to channel through. So just let me know what it is that you guys are cycling through and what you wanna hear from me. This song by Ava Max has amazing lyrics. I completely changed the chords, but I just love the lyrics. It goes perfectly with this feeling of destruction, of tearing down and burning down the old to make room for the new so that we can keep cycling and growing beautifully. I'm being a bad lesbian again, but I can still manage to play. Let's see. You can be a lover, a fighter, whatever you desire. Life is like a one way and you're the designer. Wings of a butterfly, eyes of a tiger. Whatever you want, baby, choose your fighter. I know this world can be a little confusing. Help you solve the riddle. You're perfect as you are. If you wanna break out of the box, if you wanna call all of the shots, if you wanna be sweet or be soft, then go on. Wanna go six inch or flat? Wanna wear hot pink or black? Don't let anyone tell you you can, cause you can. You can be a lover, a fighter, whatever you desire. Life is like a runway, baby, you're the designer. Of a butterfly, eyes of a tiger, whatever you want, baby, choose your fighter. Baby, choose your fighter. Baby, choose your fighter. Six inch will fly. 